any device which provides electrical energy to another device, to a striker, is called source of electromotive force. Any device which provides electrical energy to another device is called source of electromotive force. And represented by EMF, electromotive force. This is nothing about the force. It is just about providing energy. But what kind of energy? Electrical energy. So this term is about electrical energy. EMF, electromotive force, source of electromotive force, does not provide force, it provides energy. And there are two methods for producing sources of electromotive force. One of them is using chemical batteries, batteries in our life. For example, do you want control device inside which there's a battery? So around you, there's a clock. This clock needs a battery. These batteries are called source of electromotive force. So they are called, these batteries are called sources of electromotive force, but they're chemical batteries. What does chemical battery mean? Electrical energy is provided by chemical reactions. I think in chemistry we are going to learn about this in this year, electrochemistry. Chapter like You are going to talk about this. how you can make a battery. This is a symbol of electroma. This is a battery, like a battery, chemical battery. Every chemical battery has a positive terminal and a negative terminal. And on the surface of the battery, you are going to read a number. It's EMF. It's electromotive force value. How much is EMF for this battery? You will spill it. it will be written. Generally, those batteries we are using in clothes or remote controls, on the surface of their body, you will see that it's a 1.5 volt. 1.5 volt. This 1.5 volt is EMF value of this battery. So, EMF value of that battery is, is like this. I will write like this. E is equal to 1.5 volt. And what does this EMF value mean? This EM, EMF value tells you that positive terminal of this battery is at a higher potential than negative. Yeah, this terminal has a higher electric potential than that terminal by how much? 1.5. Negative terminal. So this 1.5 means the electric potential of positive terminal is 1.5 fold greater than the electric potential of negative terminal. Positive is always higher potential, negative is always lower electric potential. So positive is higher than negative by 1.5 volts. But in electric circuit, we are not going to draw always this battery with our hands. Instead of that, we are going to use a symbol. This is symbol. Symbol of that DC EMF source. And DC, what does DC mean? Direct current. Direct current means one directional current. It, Electric current is only in one direction. Always from positive terminal to mm -hmm. negative terminal for a DC EMF source. Electric current from positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal of the battery for DC EMF source. And also, for DC batteries, direction doesn't change. Also, magnitude doesn't change. If electric current is one ampere, always one ampere. It's not less than one or greater than one always one for the same device. That's why electric current for DC battery generally represented like this. If we show the electric current in y-axis, time x-axis, so its value never changes. This is DC. Its value never changes. Always positive, always same magnitude. DC. This is direct current. So this is a DC EMF source, uh, one end is positive, other end is negative. And positive end is a little longer in size than negative. You observe that? This indicates to you that positive terminal has a higher electric potential than negative. So positive is longer, negative is shorter. This symbol is symbol of a DC EMF source. Huh. Similar DC EMF source or battery in electric circuit is this. How about time? What is circuit? What does circuit mean? Circuit. Circuit means this if you you are going to make a setup connection to make a device run. 
For example, this light is on now. How? There is a connection. Wires. We connected this lamp by wires to make it operating like this. So a circuit must have three basic components. One of them is a, of course, EMF source, because the EMF source provides electrical energy. So it's going to be a battery with a positive and negative terminal. You should have an EMF source. Second one, is we need a device. It can be a lamp, it can be a battery tri player, it can be phone, it can be anything which uses energy. So I'm going to use a lamp. Symbol of a lamp is electric circuit is like this. A lamp. I will make this lamp on by this battery. I have to connect it by using wires. So I'm going to connect one end of the lamp to the positive terminal, but I should make this light on and off by using a switch. Right here. Third component is a switch. There must be a switch. This is the symbol of a switch. And the switch must be connected to the lamp. Now switch is open. If switch is open, is there an electric current? No. Line, this lamp is off. Then if switch is open, means this. No light. Switch is open. So when, when close the switch, light is on. Yeah, I can control the circuit by using a switch. This is EMF source, which provides electrical energy. This is a device, which uses electrical energy. This is the switch, which uses to control the circuit. And I connected them by using wires. This a connection, this configuration, this combination is known as electric circuit. Electric circuit, okay? When we talk about the circuit, you will understand this. We made a device running. Just like lamp, just like that clock, that just like your and that triple, just like the heater right there. So all are connected by a circuit. Okay, so this is one way to produce uh, the EMF, uh, source of EMF electromotive force using chemical reactions, chemical batteries. But chemical batteries are expensive and also they are uh, not so powerful. And we need very big power. We should use the, we should uh, give a power to the whole city. So which battery can do that? So, chemical batteries can be portable, yes. You can use it for small devices, but not for everything in your life. That's why this is not producing so big an edge. We use a second method to produce EMF source, yeah, electrical energy. This method is completely physical. Chapter 6 is talking about this, electromagnetic induction. Chapter 6. So, in chapter 6, we are going to first, in section 1, we will talk about this, how we produce electrical energy by electromagnetic induction. In section 2, we will talk about the devices, which produces electrical energy. In section 3, we will talk about the, how to use this electric current in our life. So, yes, chapter 6 is complete about this section, this title. Yani, our life is eliminated by physics, by electromagnetic induction. In chapter 5, section 3, what did we learn? If we give electric current to a wire, and if we put this wire inside a magnetic field, there will be a magnetic force acting on this wire. But there was a condition. Wire must be perpendicular to magnetic field. Yes. Chapter 5, section 3 was talking about this. Electric current through a wire in a magnetic field experiences a magnetic force and wire is set into motion, remember? So, electric current in here provided motion. Electric current is about electrical energy. Motion refers to kinetic energy. A kinetic energy is a part of mechanical energy. In chapter 5, section 3, in fact, in fact, we converted electrical energy to mechanical energy. We converted electric current to motion. We give electric current, we take motion. So we give electrical energy, 
we got mechanical energy. You put it again. In chapter 5, section 3, we give electric current to a wire. So according to right hand rule, this wire experiences a magnetic force, and this force causes the wire to move. Yeah, an electric current set by using electric current, we set the part this wires into motion. So electric current, electric energy. It provides electric energy. Because we set the wire into motion, mechanical energy. In chapter 5, section 3, you, we converted electrical energy to mechanical energy. We did this. Examples, galvanometer. When you connect galvanometer to a current, what happens to the galvanometer? It starts mm. rotating. And so on. Rotation is a part of rotational kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is a part of mechanical energy. We convert it electrical energy to mechanical energy. Loud speaker. When the electric current is given, it starts to vibrate. Huh? And vibration is about the motion. Motion is defining mechanical energy. Again, we convert it electrical energy to mechanical energy. In chapter 5, section 2, we will talk about electric motors. It's also converting electric energy because you plug the motor to the electricity, you switch it on, it starts rotating, huh? uh, rotating about rotational kinetic energy. It's a part of mechanical energy. Then these three are, these three devices are converting electric energy to mechanical energy. Chapter 5, section 3. But Chapter 6, section 1 is going to be opposite. We build the opposite thing. What does the opposite mean? We will convert mechanical energy to electric energy. How can we do that? Of course, you should put the wire. In chapter 5, section 3, you put the wire inside a magnetic field, you give electric current, wire start moving. This time, you will pull up wire inside a magnetic field. So, a wire is set into motion by applying an external force. Who is going to do, use this? Who is going to do that? I will do that. You will do that. We are going to pull a wire inside a magnetic field and we will get electric current. We will get electric current. Yeah, we will convert mechanical energy to electric energy. This chapter is talking about this. How can you produce electrical energy for your life. Chapter 6 is about this. So, you got it? Repeat it again. In this chapter, in this section, we are going to move a wire by pulling inside a magnetic field and this wire will give us electrical energy, electric current. Chapter 6, section 1. Yeah, if we will convert mechanical energy to yeah. Electric energy, opposite of that section. Now, when we are studying chapter 6, section 1, you will say, Oh, teacher, we study this chapter 3, section 1. Because we will study the same thing in opposite way. Yani, if you learn chapter 5, section 3 very well, so then which means 6 1 is going to be very easy for you. So, definition inducing means producing. What do we produce in this section? Electric current. By using what? Magnetic field. It's called electromagnetic induction. This is the definition of the ministry exam question. So, inducing, which means producing electric current by using magnetic field in physics called as electromagnetic induction. So, now we will do that. We are going to pull a wire inside a magnetic field and you will see that. This wire will give us electric current. We will get electrical energy from that wire. What we are going to do is this. We are going to pull a conductor in a magnetic field and we will pull it. So pulling a conductor perpendicular to magnetic field so that it crosses the magnetic field lines. So I am going to pull, say that this is a conductor, I will pull it in a magnetic field so this Conductor crosses the magnetic field lines. Look at the magnetic field lines in here. Are they cross into the page? Into the page? So, when I was pulling it in the plane of the page, my pen is crossing these lines, huh? Now, first you should know one thing. In a metal wire, a metal conductor, electrons are free to move. What does free to move? They can jump from one atom to the next atom, from next atom to the next atom. And they are mobile. 
Electrons are mobile in a metal wire. But protons, immobile. Immobile means unable to move. Why? Because they are trapped inside the nucleus of the atom. They cannot move. Electrons are able to move in a conducting a metal wire. So electric current is provided by motion of mobile electrons in a metal wire. Electric current is provided by motion of mobile electrons. A teacher, direction of electric current will be what? In the opposite direction of electron motion. So in this direction, electrons are moving. Electric current will be in the opposite direction. Define according to that. Okay, now, when this conductor is being pulled, I am using passive voice especially, because this wire conductor cannot move itself. We will make it move. I will make it move. I will hold conductor, this is the conductor, just like this, and I will pull it with my hand. When I was pulling this uh, conductor in a magnetic field, there were electrons, free electrons, mobile electrons. Am I pulling the electrons as well? There was electrons so inside the conductor. If I am pulling the conductor, which means I am also pulling, I am also pulling electrons, correct? Okay, in which section I am pulling them? To the right. What about the electrons? I am pulling electrons to the right as well. Question. Electrons are moving perpendicular to the magnetic field? I am making electrons pulling perpendicular to the magnetic field? Yes, magnetic field is into the board. I am pulling them in the plane of the board. So I make electrons moving perpendicular to the magnetic field. Now, go back to the chapter 5, section 3. If a charge is moved perpendicular to the magnetic field, maximum magnetic force excellent. So each electron in this conductor, while I was pulling, experienced a maximum force. Can I find this direction by right angle? Yeah. Yes, we can. Now, magnetic field is into the board. Four fingers into the board. I am pulling in which direction to the right? Palm is to the right. For an electron, opposite of your, your palm is the force. Force will be down to the board. Yeah, each electron will experience a down to the, down to the board force. What does force cause? Causes electrons to move. This force will take electrons, all the electrons to come, lower end. All free electrons, mobile electrons will move at the lower end of the conductor. So lower end becomes negative because electrons are neither the charged particles. But they are leaving upper end. When they leave upper end, they can negative leaves upper end, upper end becomes positive. This end becomes positive, that end becomes negative. What about battery? A battery has a positive terminal and a negative terminal. Now this conductor also has a positive and negative terminal. Is it similar to a battery? Yes, it is. There's a potential difference. One end is positive, the other end is negative. We say it, EMF, EMF value. Every battery is in the EMF value. 1.5 volt, 3 volt, 6 volt, 9 volt, 12 volt. This, but this wire will also have EMF value. There will be a potential difference between the ends of the conductor. Because while I was pulling this conductor, I am also pulling the electrons. When a conductor is being pulled perpendicular to magnetic field. Now let's go step by step. A magnetic force acts on the electrons. Absolutely. This magnetic force is down to the board. It is down to the page. And perpendicular to the direction of pull. So I am pulling to the right, but this force is perpendicular to my pull. And because of this, electrons accumulate. Accumulate means they go. They go. Accumulate at lower end, according to right hand rule, and lower end of the conductor becomes negative. Because electrons leave upper end, so when they leave upper end, upper end becomes positive. Then, which means this battery, this conductor now acts like a battery. It acts like a battery. Why? Because I know that battery is a positive, ter positive terminal and a negative terminal. Now this conductor is a positive terminal and negative terminal. Then I should able to measure the potential difference between the ends of this conductor, which is called in the inducing. How much is the induced EMF? Three factors determine the induced EMF. Three factors. You can predict with that. One of them. Without negative field, is it possible? So in your equation, there must be negative field. Absolutely. 
without pulling the wire is it possible? No, there must be V. You should pull it with velocity. Without a wire is it possible? So L length. Uh, if length is longer, more free electrons, so greater potential difference. If length is shorter, less free electrons, smaller potential difference. That's why electromotive force in this electromotive force in the conductor, which is pulled perpendicular to the magnetic field, depends on three quantities. Strength of the magnetic field, B. Length of the conductor, L. Speed of the conductor, how much you pull it. These three quantities determine in this EMF for the conductor. A question is going to be B and B. Yeah, you will multiply them all. B and B is equal to E in this EMF in volt. Sometimes students are um, students are writing this equation like this or memorizing this equation like this. Believe. Yes. <laughs> Believe. Wow. Believe. Believe me, it's going to be easy. <laughs> Believe. About this equation, there is no problem in your book. Just they can ask directly to this question, but if they give a question, it doesn't matter. You can write B, you can write L, you can write B, multiply them all. You will kind in this map in both. Okay? As you see, it's not so that hard. This is the information, and information you know from chapter 5, section 3. Okay, let me ask a question to you. Another question. In here, I was pulling the conductor to the right. I was pulling the conductor to the right, so lower end is negative, upper end is positive. What if I pull the conductor to the left? So upper end. Yes, upper end becomes negative, lower end becomes positive. So which means if you change direction of the pull, positive end turns to negative, negative end turns to positive. Okay, one of them is this. Second one. Look at here now. Magnetic field is into the page. I am pulling to the right. If magnetic field is out of the page. Upper end becomes again negative, lower end becomes positive. Yeah. There are two ways you can change the ends. One of them is change direction of the velocity of magnetic velocity. Second one is change direction of the magnetic field, reverse it. Direction of B and direction of V can make a change in the sign. Positive can change to negatives, negative change to positive which is called polarization, polarization. So, then let's read it here. If the direction of the pull of the conductor is reversed, you know, what does reverse mean? Yes. This direction becomes opposite. Electrons will push this time up to the page. According to right hand rule, now let's do it. This magnetic field into the page, we pull it to the left, so this is negative, so up, positive, down. So, electrons will be pushed, up to the page. That's why polarization of the conductor changes. Uh, what does polarization mean? Normally, a conductor is neutral. Neutral. What means? Equal. And uh, these charges are distributed equally everywhere. But when you do this, this distribution is lost. Yeah, I mean, negative equivalence at one place, positive equivalence at another place, and then so this is called polarized. One pole is positive, other pole is Negative. Okay? Polarized means that. But if we change direction of the motion, pull of okay, polarization shifts. Negative changes to positive, positive changes to negative. If we change the magnetic field direction, again, polarization changes. Positive changes to negative, negative changes to positive. Then yani two things can determine, can change the polarization. One of them is direction of the pull, second one is direction of the magnetic field. 